Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, with a splendid new disc on the CD label, featuring two concerti by Syrian composer Malik Jandali. He's really a good composer. I'm not kidding. I mean, he really knows what he's doing. And it's interesting. Before I get to the details here, um, let me just say it's his violin concerto with Rachel Barton Pine, soloist, and his clarinet concerto with Anthony McGill, clarinetist, with the ORF Symphony Orchestra of Vienna under Marin Alsop. So, like, these are all really, really good people performing this stuff. Serious artists, which is what new music needs. Fine performances by top, top people. Well, that's what we get here, number one. But number two, um, John Dolly is a Syrian composer in, in living in exile, basically. Um, his music is inspired, um, at least these pieces, by the sufferings of the Syrian people under the current regime and what's going on. But none of that really matters. What matters, I mean, it matters to him. But what matters to us is how good the music is. And this is very intriguing music, really interesting, because he incorporates Syrian folk music or Syrian traditional music into, the, into these pieces. I mean, the violin concerto has an important part as well for an oud. You know what an oud is. It's like a guitar lute sort of thing. Um, and it, oh, it sounds marvelous here. It really does. But even beyond that stuff, what makes this so cool is that he's able to use this traditional Syrian music, um, Middle Eastern music, without sounding tacky. And that's really hard. It's really hard because for hundreds of years, Western composers have used that this sort of, you know, Orientalist music um, for many purposes, and they have culturally appropriated it to themselves. And remember, I love cultural appropriation. I think everybody should do it all the time. I think it's a fabulous thing if it's a good composer. But, but for a genuine Syrian composer <clears throat> to use genuine Syrian music and not come across sounding like the Bacchanal from Samson and Delilah, for example, or Delib's Lacme, or any of those sort of highly perfumed faux Asian you know, confections that we all love. I mean, we adore that stuff. You know, there's a Nietzsche's dance from Pierre Ginn, right? I mean, everybody does it. Everybody does it. And here we're in a funny situation because you have Western composers who are comfortable writing in large Western forms, symphonies and concerti and other things, using these exotic elements. But here we have somebody who is comfortable with the exotic elements writing in Western large forms. It's just the opposite. And it's very, very tempting. I, you know, often you'll recognize the folk business when it happens because the music sounds Middle Eastern. I mean, yes, there's that element of, you know, belly dance, hoochie coochie sort of, you know, you know, lovely exoticism to the music. Um, and it can very easily turn banal. It really, really can. But he manages not to do that by allowing us to hear where the music is coming from, to allow its various sort of influences to, 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 to display themselves honestly. I mean, sometimes it sounds Middle Eastern. Sometimes the themes sound, sound Eastern, Eastern European, you know, Slavic, Jewish, that kind of thing, you know, because all that, all that music is related. It all, it all drinks from a common spring. And so when we hear this, we're, we're, we're more interested in it. We're more cognizant of the fact that there is a commonality to all of this music, then perhaps that the music is specifically Syrian, because most of us don't know what Syrian music sounds like, let's face it, and uh, we wouldn't know it if it hit us over the head. So we, we don't have to worry about that so much. Uh, we just listen and we understand that it has that, that sense of feeling of exoticism. But the harmonic palette, of course, is modern, so it's much, much broader. It's more like bar talk. In fact, you know, one of the movements of the clarinet concerto is a nocturne, um, similar to the Bartok night music type stuff, um, that sort of thing. And the end of the clarinet concerto, by the way, is just marvelous. It ends with this giant scream. It's just fabulous. I mean, I mean, Chandali is a a smart composer. 
He really is. I mean, the violin concerto is just extremely passionate and very, very beautifully written. And the finale, you think it's going to do the one thing a concerto should never, ever, ever, ever do, which is end quietly and slowly. And it seems to be fading out, but it wakes up at the last minute, not to be you know, a vigorous, typical virtuoso finale at all, but rather as this sort of suffusion of warmth and light and hope at the end of what's really a very tragic piece in many respects. I mean, the emotions are all are all right there on the surface. There's there's nothing, you know, phony or, or, or straining or strained about it. It's really, really good, solid, approachable, but never dumbed down music. Uh, but there, and it doesn't sound like anybody else, which is, of course, the critical point, isn't it? Now, the performances sound spectacular. Rachel Barton Pine, as we know, is a magnificent violinist. Anthony McGill is one of the great clarinetists alive today. Marin Alsop has conducted John Dolly's music before. She knows it. She knows him. She knows what he wants. He was around to tell him what he wants, presumably. And the result is recorded in absolutely pellucidly dynamic sound with wonderful balances between the soloists and the orchestra. It's terrific. And so I really recommend if, that you either stream this or buy this and give it a shot. You'll really, really enjoy it. This guy is a find. And if you like his music, there's, there's quite a bit more, um, happily, so that we can get to know him. I mean, you know, he's a composer from an area where you know, we're not that familiar either with its ethnic music or with, you know, Western classical composers from that region. So I think it's a wonderful opportunity to brush up on our unknown composers and get to know a whole world of music that we haven't heard before. But as I've said, divorce yourself from the traditional Western Orientalist, you know, sort of stuff. You have to, you have to back away from it a little bit and let this be the real deal, which it is. Um, it's not It's not a plastic plant. It's, it's an actual plant. And that's what's so cool about it. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.